Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to work with fades and crossfades in Reaper. I have a project in front of me here with a piece of audio. And it sounds like this. And if we wanted to create a fade in or a fade out, we just move our cursor to the upper left corner and it changes to a fade tool. Then we could grab it and drag it to the right to create a fade in. Now this audio is going to fade in. And we can do the same thing on the right side to create a fade out. Put our cursor on the upper right corner and it changes to a fade tool. And we can drag it over to create a fade out. And we can readjust our fades just by grabbing them like this. Make them shorter or longer on the fade out or the fade in. And we can change the curves on the fade in or fade out just by right clicking over here. This is the default that we're hearing, but we could switch it to linear and get a linear fade in like this. Or we'll switch it to a slower fade in in the beginning and faster at the end. Or any other curve we want to use. And we can do the same thing on the fade out. Just right click, switch it to linear. Or the default, or fading out quickly and slower at the end. A very natural sounding fade. Or any of the other curves over here. And if you want to remove our fade ins and fade outs, just drag it back to the left side or the right side, and it completely removes our fade in and fade out. Now, if we look up over here in the toolbar, this button turns on and off auto crossfade. And it's on by default. So if we grab an item and drag it on top of another item like this, they're going to crossfade, which means this item is going to fade out while this item fades in like this. Which is known as a crossfade. And we can readjust our crossfades by going to the left side and dragging it like this, or going to the right side and dragging it like this. Or if we want to keep it consistent, the size of it, but just move it, hold down shift, and then drag it like this. And that keeps the size of the crossfade consistent, or we could just move the in and out of the crossfade. And we could also readjust the shape. If we right click over here, we could change it to be linear or the default or any of these other shapes right down here. And we could also choose the crossfade editor down here. And that opens up the crossfade editor dialog, which is a much more advanced editor for adjusting our crossfades. And we could also adjust the shape on each side separately. If you right click over here, we could just choose different shapes for the fade out, or right click over here and change the shapes on the fade in. We'll put them back together by right clicking over here for linear or the default. And we could also just grab and change the center of the crossfade like this. So let's move this item back over here. Now, if we turn off auto crossfades in the toolbar, and now we drag an item on top of another item like this, it doesn't crossfade. Instead, it mixes both items on top of each other. So we're going to hear them both. Unless we turn on the option, 
trim content behind media items when editing. And when that's on, and we drag an item on top of another item, it trims the first one. See right here? It cut off the right side, or it trimmed it. But in either mode, if auto crossfade is turned on, and we drag an item on top of another, they're going to crossfade. Now we could also create crossfades using time selection. Let's move this item back over here. Let's say we wanted a crossfade from here to here. We could select both items, either like this, or right click dragging to select them both, then create a time selection in the section we want to crossfade, and just type X. And that creates a crossfade based on the time selection. Let's do it again. Select both items by right click dragging, create a time selection where we want to crossfade, like this, and just type X. And that creates a crossfade the length of our time selection. Now let's see what happens when we record a guitar part. Let's zoom in really close to the beginning of the recording. Reaper automatically creates a fade in right here. We can still adjust it or remove it or change the shape, but it's automatically created when we record audio. And the same at the end of our item. It creates a fade out automatically. We can readjust it, change the shape, or remove it. But it puts a fade in and a fade out on our recorded items automatically. Now let's see what happens if we punch in in this piece of audio. Let's create a time selection auto punch right here. Let's punch in these two notes with auto crossfade turned on. Let's zoom in on our punch in, and we can see Reaper automatically creates on the punch in a crossfade, making our punch ins a lot smoother. Once again, we can readjust it by holding down Shift, change the size, change the shape, and it does the same thing on the punch out right here. If we zoom in, there's a crossfade already here for the punch out, making our punches sound smoother. And we can readjust the punch afterwards. If we're not happy with it, or we hear glitching, but this is going to happen automatically with auto crossfade turned on. But if it's turned off, watch what happens. Let's redo that punch. And now if we zoom in, instead of creating crossfades, it fades out this audio and fades this audio in leaving a brief moment of silence at the punch in and punch out point. So usually we wouldn't want that. So it's a good idea to leave auto crossfade on when punching in. Now if we want to adjust our preferences for fades and crossfades, we can go to the options menu and choose preferences and scroll down to project media item defaults. And we can see by default, Reap is going to automatically create fade in and fade outs for new items. If we don't want that behavior, we can just turn it off. And we could also change the length of that fade in and fade out over here. It defaults to 10 milliseconds, but we can change it to anything we want. We could also change the default shape of those fade ins and fade outs right here. Here's the default, but we could change it to anything we prefer, like linear or slow fade in. And we could also change our default crossfades. This is the default, but we could change it to linear or any other shape we prefer. And then right over here, which is turned off by default, we could change what happens when we split our items. Like I said, it's off by default, so if we split our items right here, type S, it creates a fade out and a fade in on that split. But instead, if we turn this option on and it defaults to 10 milliseconds, 
Now, if we split our items, it creates a crossfade instead, fading this item out and this item in. Now, there's one other feature I want to show you. Let's say we set up a fade in from here that stops right here. We want it to stop on the snare. Let's say we want to adjust where the fade starts. If we move this around, it's going to also adjust where the fade ends. And we don't want that. And if we adjust it from here, it also just readjusts where the fade ends. We just want to change where it starts while keeping the ending intact. But we can do that, but it's kind of hidden. Let's go to our preferences. And let's scroll down to editing behavior and mouse modifiers. Then we'll switch the context to be media item edge and left drag. And none of these defaults are going to work for our situation. But we could change any of these. We add a new one. Right here, I'm using Control. We can go down to Move Edge and choose the option right here. To move the edge without changing the fade in end or fade out start time. So let's choose this with this modifier. Now we can hold down that modifier and it readjusts the left edge without readjusting the end of our fade in. So now we can change where it starts to fade in while keeping the end of the fade intact. It's kind of a nice hidden feature. And we can do the same thing on fade out. Let's fade out starting here. And normally, if we readjust the right edge, it's going to affect where we start the fade out. But if we hold down the modifier we just changed, it's going to keep the start of the fade out intact while just changing how long the fade is. It's kind of a nice hidden feature. But that's pretty much it. That's how to work with fades and crossfades in Reaper. Hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.